Hey everyone, welcome back to Cyber Gray Matter. Today's video is on identifying common Windows processes. This video is for security analysts, threat hunters, enthusiasts, or just someone who's curious of a current process they see running on their system. Along with going over a few of the most common processes, we'll learn more about how to identify the signs of whether what you see is actually a threat actor masquerading as a legitimate Windows process. So let's define a Windows process. A Windows process is typically an executable program, or EXE, but they can include other exploitable extensions. The Windows operating system uses many processes that pop up when the machine is booted and for other functions. Some of these help with initialization and creating the user GUI interface, loading drivers, and controlling the DLL, or dynamic link library behavior. Threat actors like to disguise malware as legitimate Windows processes to avoid detection. Having a solid understanding of the main Windows processes and what's to be expected of their behavior is important to be a good threat hunter and security analyst. First, we'll go over the common indicators and things you should look for when assessing the processes on a Windows machine. The upcoming picture examples are from Process Explorer, which is like the Windows Task Manager, but provides more information and resources. A link to this will be down in the description. First is making sure you check for process names that you don't recognize. Having a good understanding of what is to be expected on the system can help identify activity that could be malicious. Make sure to check to see if the process name is similar to a legitimate process. Malware could have a process running with a misspelling to masquerade as legitimate. This could be something like taskhostw.exe with two Vs instead of a W. Make sure to check the image path and location. Most of these Windows processes should be running under System32. If you have a Windows process running out of the Downloads folder, that's pretty suspicious. Check for processes that lack an icon or company name. Processes outside of Windows will also have icons and company names. Check for processes that are unsigned, especially if it's from a well-known company like Microsoft, and validate these signatures to make sure that they match the identified publisher. Make sure that the process has the right relationship with the proper parent child process. Check for any processes hosted by things like notepad.exe and others that shouldn't be running executables. And finally, make sure that the process isn't packed. Packed processes can also be a clear sign of malware. In Process Explorer, these will come up as dark purple. Now that we've gone through some of the general things to look for, we'll get into the common processes. Let's start with system. It's responsible for the most kernel mode threads, and the modules that are ran under this are the primary drivers, or dot system files. However, they include several DLLs in the kernel executable ntus kernel.exe. System has no image path or parent process, and there should only be one instance of it. The user account will be under local system, and it starts at boot time. smss.exe. This is the session manager process, and it's responsible for creating new sessions. There will be one master instance and another child instance for each session. This involves csrss.exe and wininit.exe. The parent process is system, and it should be found in the system32. It starts within seconds of boot time for the master instance, and the user account is under local system. Wininit manages drivers and services, and it's a key background process. There should only be one single instance of this running, and the image path should be in system32, with the user count under local system. This will start up during boot time. I'd like to make note that analysis tools usually don't catch the parent process name because it's created by an instance of smss.exe that exits. Runtimebroker.exe will act as a proxy between the Universal Windows Program, or UWP, and will provide the necessary level access, having one runtimebroker.exe for each UWP app. So if one starts the calculator.exe, the corresponding runtimebroker.exe will initiate. This image path should only be found in System32, in a parent process of svchost.exe. There should be one or more instances with the user account being under the logged on user. And the start times will vary greatly. Taskhostw.exe is the generic host process for Windows tasks, and it will continue listening to your trigger events. These trigger events might be something like a user logon, system startup, idle CPU time, or a lock or unlock of a workstation. 
The image paths should show system32, and the parent process should be svchost.exe. And there could be multiple taskhostw.exe instances under the logged on user and or by the local service accounts. The start times vary since there are various events. WinLogon.exe manages access for the user desktop and handles interactive user logons and logoffs. This process launches LogOnUI.exe, which then creates a credential provider to gather credentials for the user. It will then pass its credentials to LSASS.exe for validation. The image path should always show System32, and there should be only one instance for each user session with a desktop window manager, or DWN.exe, as the child process in the more modern versions of Windows. The user account should be local system and the start time is within seconds of boot. Start time for additional instances occur at new user sessions when they're created. CSRSS.exe. This is the client server runtime subsystem. There can be several of these running at one time and the purpose of this process is to manage low level Windows functions. It manages processes and threads imports many of the DLLs that provide the Windows API, and also facilitates the shutdown of the GUI during the system shutdown. It's important to make sure that they are running from the System32 folder and have usually have no parent process. Any additional instance of csrss.exe will result when the sessions of the remote desktop and or fast user switching are created. The user count is on the local system, and the start time is within seconds of boot for the first two instances but additional instances could pop up when new sessions are created. Services.exe hosts non-boot drivers and background services. It implements the Service Control Manager, or SCM, which will load the services and device drivers that are marked for auto start. The image path is with System32, and the parent process should be when in it. The user account is local system, and it will be started within seconds of boot time. SVCHost.exe is a generic process for Windows services and is used for running service DLLs. You'll often see many instances of SVC hosts, and threat actors often masquerade as SVC host and can use it to host malicious DLLs as a service or run it as a malicious process with the same name or similar spelling. It should be found in System32 for the image path, and the parent process is typically services.exe. There are many instances of SVC hosts with the user account typically being local system, network service, or local service accounts. And Windows 10 has some instances running as logged on users. The start time is typically seconds of boot time, though some can be started after boot. LSASS.exe handles authentication and authorization services for the system by authenticating users, calling for an appropriate authentication package found in the registry. Additionally, LSASS.exe is responsible for implementing local security policies, like password policies and audit policies, along with writing events to the security event log. The image path should show it's located in System32, and it should only be a single instance running as a child process of WinInit. The start time was within seconds of boot, and the user account is local system. Next is LSAISO.exe, and this is related to Windows Credential Guard, where the functionality of lsass.exe will be split into two processes, one of those being lsaiso.exe. Though most of the functionality is with lsass.exe, lsaiso.exe's purpose is to safely store account credentials. It will provide safe storage and will be separate from other processes through hardware virtualization technology. It's important to remember that if Credential Guard isn't enabled, LSAISO.exe shouldn't be running. The image path should show that it's coming from System32 with a parent process of WinInit.exe. There should only be one instance, if any, and the user account should be local system and start within seconds of the boot time. Last, we have Explorer.exe, and this provides users access to files. It's both a file browser with Windows Explorer and a user interface that provides features, including the user's desktop, start menu, taskbar, control panel, and the file extension associations with shortcut files. Its image path will just be the system root and not system32. The parent process is user init.exe. However, this exits, so analysis tools don't provide parent process names. 
there can be one or more logged on users and the user account will be the logged on user. It starts when the owner's interactive logon begins. And that's the end of the video. I hope you've learned more about what to check for when analyzing system processes and better understand what's considered normal on a Windows machine. Maybe you'll identify something suspicious or even better, rule out something benign. And thanks for watching. Please make sure to like the video and leave any questions down in the comment section below. Thanks.